Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our God. Amen. Have you noticed that in most churches there is a picture of Jesus as a shepherd? Trivia question, where is that picture in this church? Up in the balcony. Sometimes he's depicted with a lamb over his shoulder, or we see him standing with a flock of sheep and a staff in his hand, like that one. Or sometimes we see him pictured as a shepherd who is rescuing a lamb. But the good shepherd is one of the most common images of Jesus. This Sunday is traditionally called Good Shepherd Sunday, and it's a time to honor Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Thank you so much, Sonia, for singing Psalm 23 for us. While Psalm 23 predates Jesus, the imagery of a good shepherd would have been very familiar to those Jews who were listening to Jesus speaking in our gospel text this morning. In fact, many of them were probably very familiar with this psalm since good Jewish boys had the Old Testament memorized by the time they were in their late teens. I can imagine that Psalm 23 would have been a favorite for them. Psalm 23 is one of the most beloved passages in Scripture. We love this psalm because it fits into so many pieces of our lives. We use it for comfort when we experience severe sorrow. We think of this psalm when we're rejoicing and we want to give thanks. We think of this psalm when we're walking in the beautiful meadows. We're thinking of this song so many days of our lives when we need to have a word of the Lord in our heads. Psalm 23 is unique. There are so many psalms that approach God with a request, help me, forgive my sins, crush my enemies, don't let me die. And then there are psalms that, that give God thanks for all of the things that God has done after the fact. You did help me, and now I am grateful. And then there are those who celebrate God's greatness and grandeur, like Psalm 8. But Psalm 23 does none of these. Instead, it's a simple statement of faith and daily life and a quiet verse about the relationship between humans and their personal God. There are two images of God in this psalm. The one is God who is our shepherd, and the other is God who is our gracious host. The shepherd image was a frequent royal and kingly image in the ancient Near East. So often when we think of kings, we think of powerful men who rule from a distance and don't even care or even know their subjects. But kings do have a power, and that's why we use their language, that language, to describe God. But when the shepherd image is used to describe God, the whole image of power gets flipped around. God shows power through gentleness and by being protective. We heard in the gospel lesson today that Jesus referred to himself as shepherd. We know that Jesus confounded people by caring for the outcasts, for the sick, for the poor, for women, and for challenging the ruling class. He turned his kingly power upside down. And like a good shepherd, Jesus concerned himself with his flock and showed his power by giving his life for his sheep. Being a shepherd in the Middle East is a risky and difficult job. The hills of Palestine are rugged with large barren spots, and there are deep crevices hidden and narrow ledges along the craggy slopes of the rolling hills. Water isn't plentiful, and the evenings can just be plain cold. The shepherds need to watch their sheep 24 hours a day. They walk many miles a day looking for small green pastures for grazing and fresh springs so their sheep can drink. And at night they build fires and they roll out a blanket and they spend their entire night with the sheep just to make sure that no danger will come to them. And many times, as many of you know who have visited there, when you're driving the desert roads, you have to stop and wait for sheep to cross. And the shepherds will give you a very stern look if you upset their flock in any way. The concern and dedication that shepherds have for their sheep is so great that even if one wanders off like sheep have a tendency to do, 
Shepherds will search everywhere, even climb dangerous cliffs and descend deep, dark, dangerous crevices to find them. Good shepherds know their individual sheep by their bleats, and sheep can recognize their shepherd's voice. God knows us like shepherds knows his sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. Our God is not an impersonal God. God is my God and your God. God gives God's self to us so completely that if we trust to God to provide for us like sheep, trust their shepherd, we will lack nothing. We know we can trust God because of what God has already done for us. According to the psalmist, God is trustworthy because God provides us with verdant places to replenish ourselves. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. We have all experienced dry spells when we've been starving and thirsting for nourishment. This might be because of our own spiritual deserts or financial worries or physical concerns or just plain being lonesome right now in these days. But then somehow the right person comes along to share just the right word or you get that long-awaited phone call or the job we never expected to find will appear or we find the right doctor to help us find the right treatment. We get fed and watered. This is what our shepherd does for us. And we can trust God, our shepherd, because God also guides us in paths of righteousness for her name's sake. God wants us to live a full and healthy life. And this is so important to God that God works hard to make that happen. For sheep, righteous paths mean that the shepherd will guide them to places where they can eat and drink and be safe. That's what in paths of righteousness means in this psalm. And this is what God wants for us, too. Sheep can get distracted along the way, and they can nibble their way far away from the flock, or they get spooked and they bolt. And as much as we don't like the comparison, we are like sheep, too. We get distracted from God's hope for us. We don't worry about our neighbor's well-being. We forget that we're responsible for the stewardship of the earth. We don't welcome the stranger. Because we don't do these things, God has to do it in us and for us. God works to lead us on paths of righteousness. God, our shepherd, nudges us and helps us to do the right thing. And most importantly, God forgives us when we fail. God does this for his name's sake. God's reputation is on the line, and God wants to do everything to protect it. God wants the world to know God's love and God's agenda. And God will go to great lengths to make that known. Finally, we can trust God because God walks through the valley of the shadow of death with us. We can't avoid trials and sufferings, but while we walk through these things, God will walk with us and will see us through to the end. Rods and staves are tools that shepherds use to prod and hook the sheep to keep them safe and steer them to food and water. And God uses tools to help us as we walk through trials. All of us here have walked through that valley in one way or the other. What are the tools that God uses for you? The gift of a role model, a meal delivered at the right time, an unexpected financial support or a break? God walks with us. We can take comfort in that and rejoice in God's faithfulness. Then the psalm's imagery shifts. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. God is now the lavish host who prepares a gracious welcome for us. In the ancient Near East, hospitality to foreigners, strangers, and travelers was a sacred duty. In a hostile desert environment where travelers had little rights outside their own territory, a person was required to provide food, water, and shelter to travelers. After a dry and dusty day of traveling, oil for one's hair was very refreshing, and the host took out the responsibility of protecting the traveler and providing for his or her well-being as long as a traveler was in the host's territory. 
God provides abundant hospitality and care to us. It is God who provides for every one of our physical needs, and those gifts overflow. The two images of shepherd and host are related. Together they show us that God not only protects and guides us, but also provides for us. God wants only the best for each of us. God will shepherd us and host us and provide a dwelling place for us all the days of our lives. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And what is our response to this good shepherd? Well, all we have to do is trust and be thankful. Meister Eckhart, the well-known 14th century mystic, said, If the only prayer you say in your whole life is, Thank you, that would be enough. Amen. <laughs>